Now, today we are going to discuss about the rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. First, we'll develop the concept of rheumatic fever and then we'll see what is the relationship between the rheumatic fever and the rheumatic heart disease. Actually, we have to develop three concepts. Number one, what is the relationship of special type of streptococci, their relationship with rheumatic fever? And what is the relationship of rheumatic fever with the rheumatic heart disease? This is our task. Today, our work is that we have to develop what is the conceptual relationship between streptococcal infection with the rheumatic fever and what is the relationship of rheumatic fever with the rheumatic heart disease. Let's take a simple example that there's a child here and what really happens that in this person, right, there is sore throat. Let's suppose there's a special type of bacteria which enters in the pharynx, which attacks the pharyngeal mucosa or it may attack the tonsils, right? This special type of bacteria which can uh, incite the rheumatic fever, this is streptococcus and not every streptococcus, a very special type of streptococcus. Let me tell you, what is this bacteria? It is streptococcus, streptococcus, Cocci, streptococcus, beta hemolyticus. Which group? Beta hemolyticus. Right? Which produces a strong hemolysis. Because these streptococci produce strong hemolysins, which produce the hemolysis of RBCs in blood agar. So the streptococci are beta hemolyticus belonging to the Lansfield, Lansfield group A. Right? There was a lady called Rebecca Lansfield which subclassified the beta hemolyticus streptococci according to the special type of cell wall carbohydrates. Right? So according to the cell wall carbohydrates of the streptococci, Rebecca Lansfield classified the bacteria into Lansfield group A and B, C, D, so and so forth. This particular bacteria which I'm talking right now, this has to be streptococcus, it has to be beta hemolyticus, it must belong to blood group, uh, it must belong to Lansfield group A. a. With and it has to be rheumo, rheumatogenic strain, rheumatogenic strain. There's some strain, there were some special strains of group A which can specially produce rheumatic fever. Now. Let's suppose that this person develops this particular streptococcal infection in the sore throat from pharyngitis or tonsillitis. Then what really happens, as you know, that these bacteria will be attacked by the macrophages, right? And macrophages will take up the antigens of bacteria and present to the immune system. Let's suppose here is your immune headquarter. This is your immune headquarter. Is this patient's immune headquarter mean it's immune system. Now naturally what really happens when bacteria will attack the mucosa, bacteria will start producing damaging there and that, that will result in inflammation of the pharynx and when inflammation of the pharynx is there naturally neutrophils and macrophages are coming there, right? Macrophage will take up the bacteria and present the antigens of macrophages to the immune system. Is that right? And what will be the result? That when bacteria antigens are presented to the immune system, immune system will respond by producing antibodies, producing antibodies and sensitized lymphocytes. Right? We say there will be immune response. Now, ideally speaking, what should happen? Ideally speaking, in response to the streptococcal infection, anti-streptococcal immune response should be generated and this response, this immune response should attack back to the bacteria. These antibodies should attack the bacteria and of course you know some of these antibodies will activate the complements and destroy the bacteria. 
some of these antibodies anti streptococcal antibodies of course they will act as option in and help in rapid elimination of bacteria by the phagocytic cells this is this is what ideally should happen that when a person suffer with streptococcal infection in the throat right immune system should be activated immune response should be generated and this immune response should eventually eliminate the bacteria is that clear but you know as it happens in practical life everything is not ideal same is here that this type of situation that bacteria enters immune system activated and response is back this type of situation is true in 97% of cases this is true in 97% of cases in about 3% of the patient there is a sad story within 2 to 3% of the patient something sad happens what happens listen carefully now if there are 100 people with this type of infection 97 to 98% are lucky why because when immune system gives a response this response is so specific that it fires back on the bacteria and destroy them but unfortunately in about 2 to 3 percent of the population the immune system not only fire back on the bacteria unfortunately it attacks our own tissue as well immune system attacks our own tissue as well for example this may attack the cardiac tissue it may attack joints especially synovial joints it may attack skin it may attack subcutaneous tissue and it may attack central nervous system right so unfortunately in 2 to 3 percent of uh, people who suffer with such type of pharyngitis right this immune activation may produce lesions in the skin lesions in subcutaneous tissue lesions in the central nervous system lesions in the heart and lesions in the synovial joints so what really happens in 2 to 3 percent of these patients they develop carditis they develop polyarthritis they develop special type of lesions in the skin they develop sub uh, those lesions are called erythema marginatum and some of these patients also develop subcutaneous nodules and very unfortunate people also develop central nervous system problem especially uh, motor disturbances and chorea so what what is happening there right we can say bacteria has activated the immune system and majority of the people immune system will react in a very appropriate way and eliminate the bacteria only but in some vulnerable patient who are genetically vulnerable 2 to 3 percent of the population this immune system which is triggered by the immune response which is triggered by that streptococcal pharyngitis that immune response inappropriately cross react with our own tissues why it happens so because some of the bacterial antigens are very similar with our own antigens some of the bacterial antigens are very very similar with our own antigens for example in the bacterial suppose here is the bacteria right and this is the membrane of the bacteria cell membrane of the bacteria and here is cell wall of the bacteria this is gram positive bacteria now listen they say some of the antigens which are present in the capsule carbohydrate antigens they are very very structurally similar with cardiac valves so when immune system react against these immune system is reacting against these cell wall components it may cross react with the cardiac glycoproteins and some other people claim that some of the proteins which are present in the cell membrane of the bacteria especially protein m the protein m in the bacterial cell membrane is very very similar with some of the proteins in our own tissue like myocardial cells sarcolemma of the myocardial cell so they say that there is a great deal of antigenic mimicry 